Hey guys, it's Iran with another coding interview question. And this one is called course schedule two. It's, it's a pretty common problem. A lot of companies use it. Companies like um, Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon uses it a lot. And it also has several variations. So I can think of at least like five other examples of questions that kind of boil down to the same algorithm. So it's one of the good ones. I would definitely recommend spending the time to really understand this one. Okay, so uh, let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's say you're a college student and you need to take some number of courses to finish your major. You can only take one course at a time and you need to decide on the order. You wanna create a schedule. You wanna decide on which course you're gonna take first and which is second and so on. The problem is that some courses have prerequisites. Uh, for example, you, you have to take Algebra 1 before you take Algebra 2. Uh, maybe you also have to take uh, data structures before you take algorithms. So you have to take that into account when you're creating the schedule. Okay, and so that is the problem in a nutshell. Now, how is this problem defined as a coding question? It goes like this. You get two inputs. The first input is an integer called uh, num courses and it represents the number of courses that you need to take. The uh, courses are labeled uh, from zero to number of courses minus one. So if you need to take four courses, the names of those courses will be zero, one, two, and three. The second input for this problem is an array of pairs called prerequisites. Each pair represents a dependency relationship between two courses. So if the prerequisites array contains a pair uh, UV, that means that the course uh, labeled U depends on the course labeled V. It means that we have to take course V before we take course U. In the example, we have four dependency relationships. Now, when we deal with dependencies and sets of rules that kind of define how some elements connect to others, we really should start to think about graphs and how we can describe the problem in graph form. In this case, we can say that each course is a node and there is an edge from node V to node U if we have to take course V before we take course U. So according to this logic, we need to connect node three to node zero so let's add an edge here and node two to node one, node three to node one and node two to node three. Now, how would we find a good ordering? A good way to think about it is that uh, we can finish all the courses that have no prerequisites first, right? Because they don't depend on anything. We can just do them now and get them out of the way. So in this example, uh, course two is the only one that has no prerequisites and we can tell that from the graph because there are no edges directed into it, right? In general, because of the way we define the graph, the in degree of each node is going to be the number of prerequisites that it has. For example, uh, node one has uh, two prerequisites, so it's going to have uh, two incoming edges, meaning its in degree is two. Uh, same goes for the other nodes, so let me just uh, write the in degree of each node. So this one has two incoming edges, this one has one, this one has zero, and this one has one. Course zero has uh, a zero in degree, meaning no prerequisites. So we can just take it now, we can add it to our schedule and uh, remove it from the graph. Now the next courses that we want to add to our schedule are again the ones that have zero in degrees, because these are the ones that have zero unfinished prerequisites, right? Uh, the good news are that we don't need to look at each node in the graph in order to find them. The only nodes that were affected by the removal of node two are the ones that are directly connected to it. These are the only nodes that now have smaller in degrees and might have zero in degrees. So these are the only ones that we want to check. There's no point in checking node uh, zero, for example, because the removal of node two is completely irrelevant to the number of its incoming edges. And this saves us a huge amount of time. It takes us from a quadratic time complexity to a linear one. So it is an important observation. I will talk more about the complexity of this algorithm uh, at the end of the video, okay? So now back to our example, uh, we just removed node two, uh, and now we want to look at the neighbors of node two, which are uh, one and three. Okay, so the in degree of node one has dropped from uh, two to one. The in degree of node uh, three has dropped from one to zero. So course uh, three has zero unfinished prerequisites and we can take it, so we do. We add it to our schedule and we remove it from the graph. Now again, we look at the neighbors of the node we just removed. Um, this time it is uh, both zero and one. Both of them now have zero in degrees, dropping from uh, one to zero. So uh, both of them are ready uh, to be added to our schedule. Now we can add zero and then one. Uh, or the other way around, uh, the inner order doesn't matter. 
So let's add one first, then zero, and remove them from the graph. Now the graph is empty, so we're done. And this is our output. This is the schedule that we're going to return. Now you might be asking yourself, what if at some point we had no nodes with zero in degrees? What would we do then? It's like in this example where we must take course zero before course two, two before three, three before one, and one before two. Now the only node with zero in degree is node uh, zero. So we add it to our schedule and we remove it from the graph. And now we have no nodes with zero in degrees and nowhere to go. That means that there is no possible correct way to finish all the courses, which makes sense because if I had to take algebra one before algebra two and algebra two before algebra one, then I can't take either of them. We're stuck, right? In a graph, it will be represented as a cycle. So if our graph contains a cycle like this one, it means that there is no possible way to finish the courses and we need to return an empty array. Okay, so I think we're ready to code this out. So let's go. Now we start with uh, defining the graph. So it's just going to be a vector of vectors. I'm going to call it G and the number of its nodes is uh, num courses. And we're also going to need an array uh, for the uh, in degrees. Each node is going to have an in degree, so it means that the size of this array is also uh, num courses. Now we want to initialize our graph, so we're going to do that by iterating over the prerequisites array. So for each prerequisite, So our graph is implemented with an adjacency list. So we're basically just adding um, a neighbor to this node. Next thing we want to do is update the in degree of this node because it has a new incoming edge. So we increase its number of incoming edges. Similarly to normal BFS, we want to keep a queue and this queue will hold all of the courses that we are ready to add to our schedule. So we want to find all the nodes that have zero in degrees and add them to our queue. So if the current in degree is zero, we want to add this node to our queue. And now at this point, if uh, our queue is empty, that means that we have no uh, nodes with zero in degrees, meaning uh, that the graph is completely made out of cycles and there is no way to finish the uh, to finish all the courses. So if the queue is empty, we want to just return an empty array. Now let's uh, define a vector for the schedule. Now while the queue is not empty, we want to take the course that is at the front of the queue and we want to add it to our schedule. And we remove it from the queue. Now we want to iterate over the neighbors of the node we just removed. So we're going to iterate over the adjacency list of this uh, node. And for each of the neighbors, we're going to decrease its in degree. And if the neighbor's in degree has now become zero, we want to push it to our queue uh, because now it is ready to be added to our schedule. Now, if we get to this point, and we haven't processed all of the nodes, and that means that there is uh, some cycle left in the graph, um, which means that we can't finish all of our courses and we need to return an empty array. So at this point, we need to check if the size of schedule is the same as uh, num courses. And that means that we have processed all of the nodes. Uh, in this case, we can return the schedule. Otherwise, we return uh, an empty array. Okay, so I think we're good. Okay, we were missing this explanation sign. Okay, so uh, let's try to submit this. Okay, so that's a success and with pretty good time. Now, a few words about the uh, complexity of this algorithm. The time complexity is going to be O of V plus E, uh, where V is the number of nodes in the graph. In our case, the number of nodes in the graph is num courses, and E is the number of edges in the graph, 
which in our case is the length of the prerequisites array, because each pair in the array represents an edge in the graph. Now, the way we get to this complexity is because in the worst case, uh, each node is pushed to the queue exactly one time. That's where we get the V from. And then for each node, we iterate over all of its neighbors, and that's where we get the E from. Okay, so that's how we get to V plus E. Now for the space complexity, it is actually the same, it is V plus E, uh, and that's because we have the Q, uh, which in the worst case would contain all of the nodes. Uh, that will happen if uh, we have uh, no prerequisites and all the nodes have uh, zero in degrees. So that's where we get the V from. Uh, and also we have the uh, graph itself because we constructed the graph uh, and its size is also dependent on the uh, number of prerequisites and that's where we get the E from. So the space complexity is the same, it is O of V plus E. Okay, so that is it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I have more of these coming up, so go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and that's it, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.